you what your problem is. God got the answer. Amen. Amen. This is not just a covenant of mercy that God got, not just a covenant of life, but also a covenant of unchangeable power. When Christ said that tis finished, he meant it. It was tis finished for you. God will want to do things with his people ever since he created them. Man messed up. But then he said he's going to make a new covenant. And then he can do anything with you he wanted to. God wants to bless you, people. Amen. Whether you realize it or not, he wants to change your whole life. Right. And put a new life in you and make you a total complete new creature. Amen. You're born from death to life. When you're born again, there's no death in you. Amen. You know, a lot of people, you got to tell your preacher day after day. That's Colton David's scripture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil of thy rod and thy staff that come from me. I got news for you. When you're born again, you don't walk through the shadow of death. You walk under the blessings of God. Come on. Amen. Death has disappeared. Christ did away with it for you. He died in your place. Before I get too excited, I guess I better pray. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. I don't know about you, but I feel good. Amen. I'm here to tell you, God's been good to me. He's been so good to me sometimes, I think it's better for you than he is anybody else, but he ain't. He's good to everybody. Let me pray. Father, you see each and every need here, every one of them, you know their need. You know their heart. You know their mind, and you know their spirit. And you know exactly what they need, God. So I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of your word and the authority of the covenant and the authority of my birthright, I'm asking you, Lord, to do what you need to do to help these people. God, in the name of Jesus, inhabit these people, Lord. Let them feel your mighty love and your mighty mercies and your mighty power. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm going to tell you something. God's love. You say, well, I've been so mean. And say, I know where I've been. I come from a, I came from a bad family. A lot of people don't realize that. I know where I've been. I know where I've come from. I know what I've done. God don't remember it though. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> God don't remember it. Why? He done forgot it. When he forgave me, he had to see a forgetfulness. So you can bring up anything you want to. God say, hey, I don't know nothing about none of that. I done forgive you. You know, I also got, a, also got an attorney named called Jesus Christ. He stands at my side. That's what an advocate is, whether you realize it or not. He defends you. And you know my defense? I've got the greatest defender there is in the world that ever has existed or ever will exist. Amen. And I've got a covenant through him. And I covenant of a covenant of power. And whatever I'm faced with, he's on my side. Why? Because everything God prophesied is to my advantage. Everything God promised is to my advantage. Everything God promised is to your advantage. And when Jesus Christ died and hung on that cross, brought forth a new covenant, it was a Zoe life covenant. Whether you realize it or not, that's God's substance placed in you. It's God's Zoe life, the substance that makes him God. Because it always has been and always will be. It's a covenant of eternal, unlimited, unmeasurable life. That's what Zoe means. And so we got that kind of life. In this life that I live in right now, I've got Zoe life. Because I've been born again and was born into eternity. Death does not dwell in me. And whatever my past is, is past. I'm like Dr. Paul that I take my, I take, I'm dressed toward the future. Everything God got for me, I'm pressing forward to the future. I'm getting about my past. Don't want to do it. But there's a lot of stuff back there I don't want nothing else to do with. And God don't want me to. You can mess your own life up by just living in the past. Mm -hmm. Sitting around, oh, I don't, man, I remember what I did here. I remember what I did there. First thing you know, you done messed up. <laughs> you done got your desires hit the wrong way. Stop doing it. When them things cross your mind, start praying. And then, have you ever stopped to realize when you start talking to the Lord, you forget what you're thinking about? <laughs> I say you overcome temptations. You're faced with something that just torment your mind, start praying. 
before we get open to that mouth. See, God breathed the breath of life into you. Every time my mouth is open, it's spiritual words that come out of your mouth because you're a spirit being. You're a spirit being living in a natural body. That's how you overcome things. I know myself. I done been there. Done done that. And now I understand how God is and what God wants with me. Because I've been born again and I've been born to an unchangeable, uh, timeless, our cup, our, our. I'm talking about all of us. Our covenant, unchangeable power. God's giving you this power. It is unchangeable. God not going to change. And before I started, the Lord put this on me. So I looked it up. If you want to follow me, it's in Hebrews 6. Starting at the 17th verse. I had got this real bad, but this is what God said read, so I'm going to go with the Spirit. I don't go against the Word of God. I go with the Word. You need to learn that. Never go go to what you want. You go go what God wants. Amen. Wherein God willing more abundantly. Look that word up. Means unlimited, unmeasurable. Abundantly. To show unto the heirs. The heirs is us. We have inherited God. We've inherited Jesus Christ. We've inherited the power source. We are in covenant with God. And everything that God has is mine. Jesus said everything that is the Father's mine. And then the Holy Ghost shows it to you. So we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ and all the power source that God is. Through Jesus Christ, I am also in you too. That's why he said the Holy Ghost has to show you. He's got to show you, reveal it to you, let you know, make it known, because you don't know how to use it. That's a bunch of power there, you don't know how to use it. I like a person with a drive on a tank. If he don't have a drive on a tank, but he gets self cute. <laughs> he blows himself up. You see, you've got to learn how to use what God's given you. When you get more in the game, you've got to grow. I've been around some of these self-righteous hypocrite preachers so much sometimes I'd like to slap their jaws when you get some word of the Lord. Every time you met, or you're going to hell right now. Give the man a chance to grow. Give the woman a chance to grow. Come on. Give him a chance to repent and go on. You gotta learn. That's why he said, learn of me. He didn't say you know all about me when you get born again. Learn of me. And when you learn, you learn how to use the power. Because we have an unchangeable covenant of power. It's ours. And it's all power source. What is God? God is love. But what is love? It's the anointing that comes on you. Remember when Jesus was blue with compassion? What great miracles he did? Why? God is love. And why does say love has a multitude of sins? Because I'm going to forgive you. I don't care what you've done to me. I'm going to forgive you. I don't care what's happened in my life. I forgive them. And when I forgive them, then I'm going to stand in good standards of the Lord. If they don't forgive me, then they got problems. <laughs> Come on. Amen. You see, if you can't live with love, you can't live with God. Come on. you got to have the love of God in your life to be what God wants you to be because He's love. And He wants you to be like Him. Amen. Remember when He created man? He didn't create man, just throw them together and there he is. No, he created him in his own likeness, in his own image. Then he breathed the breath of life into him, which is spirit. So that's why I'm telling you, every time you open your mouth and you speak, as it's written in the book, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Now you look at the word power, it's talking about handling things. You handle things in life with what you say. Another word like Jesus said, speak to that mountain. He didn't say it's out there look at it. He said speak to it. Why? Get the spirit to it. He didn't say speak to that tree. It ain't going to jump up and jump the river or the sea. He said speak to it. You don't sit there and look at anything. If you got a problem, talk to it. If you're faced with a problem in your life, we have an unchangeable covenant of power. And every word that comes out of my mouth is spirit. Everything that I say is spirit. Everything you say is spirit, whether it be good or bad. You're going to need the fruits of your lips. That's why I was preaching one time about you can prepare your own life with the word you say. 
He looked at me like I was crazy. I got news for you. You live what you say. <laughs> and you don't believe your own self or you believe anybody else. Amen. So it's important. So, let's get back to this now. We're in God willing. Now see, God, if God is willing to do this for me and you, He wants it done. God wants you blessed. God wants you full of His power. God wants you to show the world who He is. Amen. That's what we're called to do. We're in God more willing to abundantly to show them the heirs of promises. Now why do you say promise? Because when Jesus was hanging on that cross, his tears finished, he will say it, every promise that you have spoken, every word that's come out of your mouth, it can be accomplished now. So that's why he said, the heirs of promise. I am an heir of promise. You're the heir of promise. And everything that comes out of God's mouth is mine. I've inherited God's word. You've inherited God's word. I'm born with God's word. I've been resurrected with a with a substance of the power and born to the substance of the power. I'm born to the word, resurrected spirit, power, and the Holy Ghost. I worship Him in His own substance. Did you say you worship in spirit, truth? Or what's the spirit? The Holy Ghost. What's the truth? The word of God. You can't worship God unless you worship God in His own substance. Hear something about that? You can't worship God unless you worship God according to what He's prepared for you to worship Him with. His own substance. He can deal with His own substance. But He won't mess with a sinner that won't turn to Him. You turn to Him, you're His. And when you're His, then everything He said is to your advantage. Look here, I want you to listen to what it says here. Now look at this. He says, Our promise. The immutability, unalterable, unchangeable, immutable. That's what that word means. It can't be changed. It can't be altered. It can't be messed with. It's going to be just like he said. Whether I like it or I don't like it. It's going to be just like it coming out of his mouth. It is. The immutable of his counsel. What counsel? That he made his mind up to do for us. He counseled within himself. He said, let us talk about the spirit, word, the power, and the Holy Ghost. Being his own being. He got a counsel in his own being and confirmed it by an oath. Now, if he says, I'm going to do this or I'm going to give up my Godship, brother, you, you're going to better pay attention. But that's what the oath is. Nothing no greater, nothing no more powerful. I will not give up my Godship, but I promise you by my Godship it will be done. He's talking to us here. And we're the heirs. That the two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. See, it's impossible for God to lie, it's impossible for God to die. So what we got? We got the eternal word of God, we got the eternal life of God. We worship God in the eternal word of God and the eternal spirit of God. So what we're worshiping in eternity. <laughs> you stop and think about it. Everything about God is eternal. He always has been and always will be. Don't look out that one time and say, what do you mean? I said he always has been and always will be. That's why it's called the eternal God. Eternity he always has been. When you die, you just go into it. It already is now. God can't change it. In which it was impossible for God to lie that we might have a strong consolation or comfort. I know God can't lie, He's going to keep His word. I know everything that's come out of His mouth is to me. So therefore I'm comforted in knowing that God's going to keep His word. He don't want to die about six or ten weeks. I pray to God, heal me, God, heal me, God, heal me. I got so weak, about to fall flat on my face. I said, God, I believe in Him. I preach Him. I totally believe in Him. All of a sudden the Spirit moved on me. He says, I know you have love, you have care, you have concern, and you love people, but where is your earnest expectation? You see, when you pray with earnest expectation, you pray continuously. Well, I wasn't doing that. I said, God, heal me, I'm going to do what I want to do. But God wants you to be sincere and earnest with Him. 
They want you to stay earnest with them. And if you stay earnest with them, I promise you God will fulfill everything He said. And I promise you by His Word, it will be accomplished because He wants you to be continuously worshiping Him. Don't stop worshiping Him. Don't stop praying to Him. Realize God is the authority of life. And without God, you've got no life. Come on. All you got is a daydream. Amen. All we this, all we that. Where we should pray and get it. I told a guy one time, I said, everything is in existence. It hears God. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, God told, spoke to the tree and it come up by its roots. I said, if you ever talk to the tree? <laughs> it heard him, didn't it? It died. He spoke to the sea and just to the sea. I said, if you ever talk to the sea? He looked at me. <laughs> he stood still. He spoke to the wind. It ceased. You see, he even told the fish. He told the fish to go fish. Get that gold coin out of that fish in mouth. He talked to the fish. He talked to the domain. And what happened to all them fish? When they went fishing all that, couldn't get stuff. Because he called all the fish to where he was. All the fish was there. Went out there, sent them out there, and they caught more than the sea in both boats. You see, anything you got in front of you, it hears you when you say in the name of Jesus. I don't I was walking down the road one time, you know, the dog just smiles after you in trouble. And I was walking out and this big old dog come out of there. He didn't growl, he just smiling at me. He liked it, didn't he? <laughs> I, I knew I'd fit a bit. I said, Jesus, by that time I was there, so I was going to say it. Everything got life when you speak with the anointing, it hears you. That dog heard the Holy Ghost. He wants something else because them ears all perked up. God can do anything but lying down. I don't care what you face with. I've, I've had people have been, have been drunk, so, oh, such a drunk, come up here and we pray for them and they're sobered up and live the Christian life. People have been on drugs. They've been come here and been delivered and got up and lived the Christian life. You see, what God does, He does. And He did it instantly. It might take Him no year or two. You ain't got to go through no, what, 12 steps? They call it 12 steps. Or <laughs> 7 steps. I mean, he does it instantly. You're, you're not no longer uh, an alcoholic. People, well, I'm an alcoholic recovery. If God has delivered you, you're not an alcoholic. You're free. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Freedom in Christ, that's real. Amen. Freedom in Christ is real. Now, after a little funnier. It's impossible for God to lie. But we might have a strong consolation. And he and who have fled for refuge to lay hopes on the hopes set before them. Now, without refuge, what is the place of refuge? Where something in trouble, you've got a problem in your life, and you can't get rid of it, so you seek refuge. And that's what he's talking about. A troubled life person. Someone that's so full of trouble that every way they turn, they got problems. They can't seem to get rid of it. You ever been around? I have. I've seen people. I've seen council people. That, my Lord, there's no way they seem like they get rid of the problems. But I said the hope's in Christ. Pray with them. And God give them deliverance. God can. And which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. And when you got that kind of hope, you're stable. And a stable person God can use. An unstable person God can't use. Now in Psalm 89, 34, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. In other words, and we have, we've inherited it. Everything that come out of his mouth, we've inherited it. So that's what he's talking about. I'm not going to change my covenant. I'm not going to change what I said. If you do what God said, you all heard people say, well, uh, God can change a little bit, can't you? No. God can't change. It's impossible for God to change. That's why man has to change to go with God and do what God wants. He's unchangeable and all of Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. The reason what they weren't consumed because of the mercy. I'm glad he's merciful. You look at a lot of us today and the things we've done. What if God had to wipe us off the face earth sometime? But you see, when Jesus died, God was pacified. He's not that man no more. So he's not going to beat you in the head if you mess up. He's not going to beat you in the head if you, if you mess up coming and going. But if you keep on repenting, eventually you won't mess up. Get yourself straightened up, straightened out, 
and keep on keeping on. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Unchangeable. He don't change. Same, same God was, same God still is. In Hebrews 12, 28, 29. Wherefore we receive in a kingdom. No, pay attention to this. This is our kingdom. We receive in a kingdom. Wherefore we, we, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Cannot be moved. Why? God's unmovable. That that God is, is unmovable. Let us have grace, which means favor with God, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. But in other words, with earnest expectation of God, and God will keep His word with us. That's what He wants. Second Timothy. One seven. You know a lot of people say, ah, you ain't got enough sense to serve God. You have done it. You ever heard that? Well, the God didn't call me to be a dummy. <laughs> God didn't call me to have an unsound mind. God didn't call me to be unstable. Look at what it says. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. What kind of covenant we got? An unchangeable covenant of power. Of power. God give us his power. What they've done is call us to power. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and a love. Who's God? God is love. That means anointing of love. I mean, you're going to love them no matter what talented that they are. I mean, I've seen some lovely people. But you know, God, when God gets a hold of them, they beautify them with a salvation plan. You know, that's about it. He said, I beautify you with a salvation plan. I believe that's an 150 son of things this day. A love and of a sound mind. Not somebody, dummy. He'll give you sense. God will, don't you just look like this right now. Peter, James, and all them fishermen, they were a bunch of dummies. And when they come before the king, old king looked at him and said, oh, he knew they'd give him to Jesus because he's smart. <laughs> God doesn't give him some sense. He said, when you walk with Jesus, you learn it. And when you learn, you become an intelligent person. And God will show you things to come like you never dreamed of. You will open your eyes to see things like you never thought would be. They're all yours. Why? God said so. Why? I've inherited it. If I've inherited it, it's mine. You know, people say, well, don't seem like I get ahead and forget behind. What did the Bible teach us? God owns all the silver and gold and all the cattle of a, a thousand years. Amen. And if he says you have the power to call things in existence, you're a spirit being, understand me very clearly. And I mean understand me very clearly, and I say it again. You are a spirit being living in a natural body. Everything God said is spirit. It's done being manifested. Every answer to your prayer, every need you need, you're walking under the ever promise of God now. You're not walking under the under death. You're walking under the promises of life and power and authority. You ain't walking under the greatest power of the most high God. Amen. All the promises. They're yours. And understand that. That's what you're walking under now. What you need, ask God for it. Leave it and expect it to come to pass. Come on. You have to earnestly. I learned that the hard way. Earnestly, I may get down to the business of God. <laughs> Earnestly expect God to keep His word. God expects you to expect Him to keep His word. If you don't expect God to keep His word, you don't have the faith you need. So God expects you to expect Him to keep His word. So we have. What do we have? We have been given the Spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So quit letting people tell you you're crazy. You ain't crazy. You got good sense. You serve God, don't you? Romans 8 and 17. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God. That means I've inherited God. People say, what? I've inherited God. I've inherited God. He's my father. Right? And join heirs with Christ. And he's talking about the anointing here. See, Jesus is Jesus. But Christ is the anointing. That's not Jesus' name. It's Jesus the anointing. That's what it really is. Christ means anointing. 
So what is it? Join ours with the anointing. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now he's talking about suffering with temptation, suffer temptation with him. Because you ain't gonna suffer with Jesus. Jesus done died when I went to hell, whooped the devil come back. Said the right hand of trouble. He's talking about suffering with the troubles and trials and not giving up, keep on keeping on. That's what he's talking about. You ever heard people, people say, these witches, I have. I'm gonna put a curse on them. Well, I got you, sir. They can't, they can't curse someone's lips. Right. Satan cannot curse you. Don't let nobody put that ugly shoe on you. Satan cannot curse you. No witch can curse you. No demon of hell can curse you. You've been blessed of God, and if you're blessed of God, you will start the over the curse. Amen. You turn around, around, turn everything is said that you turn it around on. I've done it. I've done it. I had this. <laughs> it's kind of funny to me. Now, she got her left. But it was kind of funny to me. She telling all these fortunes. And telling my mother fortune, telling my sister fortune to walk in. She said, I'm going to tell your fortune. I said, no, again, what have you got in your mind? If you're going to tell me, I'm going to turn it on you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I've got man to to me. She slapped that book and get a book of cards together. said, I don't believe it no way. Come <laughs> on. You see, God can do anything. Amen. He's protected me. God can do anything for you. He wants to protect you. God can do anything that is needed in your life. I don't care what it is. Amen. I'll say it, I'll say it again. I don't care what you need in your life. Come on. God wants to give it to you. It takes He takes pleasure in giving you things. You realize that? You find the fourth, sixth chapter of Bible there where it says, I will do all my pleasures and all his pleasures is with you. He said, I said it, I'll bring it to pass. Four, six, chapter Isaiah 9 to 11. Read it sometime. That's good. He says, I am God and there's none other. I am God and there's none like me. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, go a little further. This, this, this you need to grab hold of. St. John 16, 13 to 15. How be it? He, the Spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you unto all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. In other words, he's going to show you the future. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. In other words, he's going to make it known and going to reveal to you. That's why it's important to pay attention to God. All things that the Father has in mind. All right. Now, if I'm a joint out with Jesus Christ and everything that God's got belongs to Jesus, everything that God's got belongs to me. Amen. I've inherited God and I'm a joint out with Jesus Christ. So all this authority and all this power, all the substance is mine. Mine. It's yours. Hear me again. It's yours. But you've got to believe it to receive it. If you don't believe it, you won't get it. Come Amen. On. I used to have a little saying, you, you believe it, you can have it. You doubt you do it that. <laughs> That's true. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He speaks about all that I, in other words, he's talking about everything that I'm joined there to and you're joined there to. That's what he's talking about. And everything that belongs to God belongs to him, so it belongs to me. First Peter 4 and 11, this is the way you talk. I want you to get this and get this good. This is the way you talk. And if you, got, if you got your Bible, look up 1 Peter 4 11, underline. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Why? God said it, and I'm going to say it like God. If I say it like God, it's going to work like God talking. That's what he's talking about. If I speak it like God, speak the words of God, and I talk like God, then it's going to happen just like God said it, because the anointing's there. Amen. I've inherited it. I have the anointing of it, and if God anoints me and I speak like God spoke, it's going to be. It's got to be. God can't lie. But you got to have the faith to do it. Expect it. When you say it, expect it. And if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. 
to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. I'm going to rush on through this. Ephesians 3 and 17. Didn't get this through 20. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. You ain't got to love him good enough. You may be able to comprehend. And I mean to understand able to, to do what, what you understand. When you comprehend something. To comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. No word God wants to do everything in the world about it. He ain't trying to hide nothing from you. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled. Listen to this. A lot of people don't, don't, don't believe this. But this is Bible that's in the Bible, so look it up and read it. Pay attention to it. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I try you to know him. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Not a double portion anymore. It's a try you to know him. Three chords keeps hard to be broken. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> I like it when it all comes together. <laughs> now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We got it. He placed it there. Christ died so we could have it. That's what the new covenant's all about. A lot of people don't realize that. That's what the new covenant's all about. So God can do with his people what he wants to do. What he always wanted to do. Get us a song. Let's give it all to call and we'll go eat. You know, if people can understand how much God loves you, 